Hi all, Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics here. In this video, the part 3 of the Tesla Coil Show Controller, we are doing the plate, the front plate for the suitcase, the 19 inch rack suitcase for the output board here, along with all the knobs and switches and output indicators and also the optical outputs that I would like in this front plate. So let's get building. Building up the whole interface card here for the six optical outputs where I do want to have quite a lot of um, controls and that also mean manual control. So while this is a nice digital setup and you can do a lot of things from the touch screen, I want to add on six analog interrupters as well. I want to be able to turn on off the optical output by its own. I want to turn on and off a little speaker like this one for just a dry testing uh, midis. And I would also like to be able to choose between the analog and the digital interrupter or MIDI part. So that adds up to quite a lot of switches, LEDs and other output devices. So I have a lot of wires here that is just going to be the switches between one or the other interrupter type and then the power supply wires here and then the switches for speaker and optical output will just go yeah, even colored and then striped, even, striped, even, striped in order to get some kind of structure because this adds up to something like 50 wires going out from the small board. So let's get all this put together with all the components and yeah, then we're ready to rip six coils at once. Now I would like to have the optical inputs sitting in a row over here, LEDs just underneath, and then a on-off switch for each channel underneath the LED again. And then on the opposite side I would like switches between the analog and digital interrupters and also a test uh, switch for the um, speaker so I can do dry tests uh, without Tesla coils connected and still get some sound out of it to actually just listen to the beeps from a speaker as that corresponds pretty well to how a Tesla coil would sound. At least you can quickly hear if something is out of order. So let's just get this drawn up on paper and make a kind of template to do the drilling. I have these small LED holders here, where it will be nice and shrouded around it. Just because I also chose these uh, old large green LEDs because I do not want to get blinded while you would probably operate something like this in the dark. And some just some small uh, switches. So I have some 5mm holes for the row of switches for turning it on and off. 8mm for these LEDs. 15 millimeter for the optical outputs and then also five millimeters for the two row of switches over here and then the speakers will be mounted somewhere underneath. Uh, it's just these small round speakers here. Half a watt, 8 ohm, so I'll just have a suitable resistor on to limit the current to that. Let's get uh, these holes made.
the first panel done, all holes made for the switches, the LEDs and the optical outputs. We have the optical output board here, have some switches here and some potentiometers for later on for another panel. So I'm going to use a adjustable wrench, a wrench and a socket wrench and a Torx screwdriver in order to mount some 3mm screws and also the small nuts here for the different yeah, mounting hardware for the switches and LEDs. A small trick when you uh, mount hardware in a painted surface is to use some masking tape on your tools. So I'm going to put a little masking tape here on the tip of this adjustable wrench or on the flat side here if I'm going to use that and also just put it uh, some here around the edges of this socket. So when you put it down here against the paint surface and you twist it around, you do not make any scratches into the paint. With all the switches mounted and the output board here with the six optical outputs and the six LEDs, all there's to do now is get all these wires sorted and soldered into the respective switches that they are going to use. And it is of course laid out like so that the one closest to here goes to the switches furthest away and these that comes from over here goes to this. So as you can see, I have already made the length between the switches the same distance as on the output board. So to take advantage of the whole width of the panel, but also to make mounting easier with a even length wire on everything. So by planning the layout correctly, you can make life so much easier for yourself that everything is the correct length when you start to soldering everything in. And from the front, you can see, it's, all switches are not exactly flush, but um, that doesn't really matter. Once it, this gets some uh, markings, you are not going to notice that one switch is maybe half a millimeter higher up than another. The optical outputs here are not... yeah, that could have been better. The holes uh, are somewhat bigger than uh, expected, but yeah. The optical outputs were not sitting uh, totally straight, so I needed a little more leeway to get them through. But the LED diodes here turned out very nice. I chose some um, green, very dim LEDs in order to not get blinded by these when using this controller in the dark. test the six output panel here. Everything is wired up now. I have two different signal generators connected to this, as we can also see over here on the oscilloscope, that we have a very low frequency or BPS going on the blue trace, and we have a one to, I think it's 25 hertz going up and down from a synthesizer on the yellow trace. And I have set up that half the outputs here, these three are going on the low frequency and the other three over here go on the synthesizer. As we can see that works smoothly. So what you can do now is you can actually turn off individual outputs like that. But then you can still listen to the, to the output. Now I will get my uh, 
microphone near these speakers. As you can hear. I would like to uh, exchange those small speakers to maybe some PC or electric speakers, but I could not find my box of them. I know I have a box of them somewhere with 200 in, but uh, yeah, that's just gone. So let's turn all the outputs back on. And as we can see, those were right now just three each the row and switch around like that. Or all but one on one interrupter. So this uh, nice panel here makes it possible for me to yeah, switch between two different interrupters and also switch off the outputs if I do not want to make sure I'm not running with a coil and also have this dry test speaker output. So let me just put my microphone near the speakers again and you can hear that I will turn off all the oscillating um, outputs. Thank you for watching part 3 of the DR SSTC Tesla Coil Show Controller build. Today we went through building the panel for the 6 optical outputs and all the switches associated with switching between different interrupters and also disabling the outputs itself. So for part 4 I will go more into depth with the synth interrupter interface, flashing some new firmware on it and also test out some of the small bugs and maybe small art features on the synth interrupter and help Max develop that project into a more mature interrupter that does not have all these little tiny bits of flaws still. But that's software development for you. So until next time, see ya!